Hi, it's Allison from Mahalo.com, and we're continuing our discussion today of the quadratic formula. Today, we're going to talk about satisfying the condition, the first step. Now, the condition for the quadratic formula is that our quadratic equation is in this form. So let's look at an example. We have this equation right here, x squared equals 3x minus 5. So is that in the right form to use the quadratic formula? Actually, it's not, because we don't have all the terms on one side, and they're not set equal to 0. So we're going to do a little algebra and rearrange it so that we can use the quadratic formula. So we want to move this 3x over to this side of the equation, and since we're adding 3x here, we can do that by subtracting 3x from both sides. So we have x squared minus 3x equals 3x minus 3x, and we keep our minus 5. Now, 3x minus 3x is just 0, so that goes away. So now what we need to do is we need to get this 5 over to this side. And we can do that by adding 5 to both sides of the equation. So here we go. x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals the 3x and the 3x just went away, minus 5 plus 5. And minus 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. So we end up with x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Now, we have the right form to satisfy the condition. Now, I know we have a minus sign here and a plus sign here, but that's really OK, because we can always change subtraction into addition by just changing the sign of whatever we're subtracting. So minus 3x is the same as plus negative 3x. So our equation is actually in the perfect form to satisfy the condition, and we can use the quadratic formula. So the next step in the process is identifying a, b, and c in the equation we want to solve, and we're going to do that next time. And that's how you satisfy the condition for the quadratic formula. Thanks for learning with me today. If you have any questions on this topic or anything having to do with math, please click on the links or send us a request to requests at mahalo.com. See you later.